that we can go from. OK, so on this one, guys, again, if we want to evaluate, uh, you know, we want to make sure we can find the antiderivative. And again, you don't need to like separate this. The um, integral from 3 to 1 of e to the x plus the integral from 3 to 1 of uh, 3. And then you don't need to like separate it. You guys can just show your work um, from 1 into the case. So the first part, though, is we want to be able to evaluate, see what the integral is. So the integral of e to the x is just e to the x plus 3x. And then again, you don't need to add the c, but I'm going to show you guys what happens if we do add the c. And then we're going to integrate, we're going to evaluate that from 3 to 1. Okay. Um, this is the only time I'm going to show the C, but I want to show the C again for the reason. So this then equals, uh, let's see, e to the 1 plus 3 to the 1. Now, I will say, guys, parentheses here is huge, huge. Oops, I'm sorry. I wrote that in there. Did I write that 3 to the 1? Oh, I wrote that in wrong. Sorry about that. Sorry, at least my problem was I had it written up there. Yeah, let's just rewrite that, right? That's fine. That's how I had it, right? Sorry, let's just write it in there. That's fine. It was just different than what I did on my, uh, on my problem, so that's fine. But I want you guys to make sure you understand something. It's very, very important. When you guys are evaluating, I need, um, when you guys are doing this, make sure you guys have this parentheses. Because otherwise, the most common mistakes I see, students will just subtract the e cubed, and they'll forget to distribute that all the way across. Now, the important thing is, do you guys see what happens with the c's? c minus a positive c, which is zero. just 0. So the c's always are going to subtract a 0. That's why you don't really need to include them. OK? Um, anyways, let's go ahead and figure what we get here. So we have e to the first um, plus 3 minus e cubed minus 9, right? And therefore, we could rewrite this as a negative e cubed plus e to the first um, minus 6. Cool. Questions? No? Yes? The reason why I didn't like that, you, typically we, I don't know why I like row them the other way. Typically we usually have the higher number in the front, and we only really want to have them that way. And this is something we're going to talk about later, so I didn't mean to, uh, I just, my mistake though in writing it that way, I don't know why I did it, because that's not how I wrote in my test. But anyways, typically I will say, in general, it's usually the smaller number down here to the higher number up here. And we only switch it this way when we're looking for a certain type of area, which we'll do at the end of class today. All right, so why don't you guys go ahead and try one, see how far you guys get. I have a feeling this would probably be the hardest one for you guys.
Anybody remember arc sine? You get two arcs. So it would just two arcs. Yeah, it's just be two arcs high. Because it's just a constant. Shouldn't it be the one half should be in front? It should be one half minus zero. Yeah. Does that happen once or twice? You guys want to? Five or six, the only one? It's a multiple choice test. There's only one, there's only one answer. Which one is it? F five or six or five, five or six? Maybe somebody from my pre-calculus class remembers the difference between pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Why one is the answer, why one is not. One's on the other side. Did I talk about that in this class? All right. Let me go over this answer here real quick, and then I'll... Uh, 